I would like very much, if it's okay with you, to read a couple of paragraphs from a letter I read that was um, written by Roger Ebert. Would that be all right? Yes. Um, I think they're very beautiful. Um, be skipping through here. This was um, a letter written to you um, by Roger Ebert, November 17, 2007. I have to uh, say one thing beforehand. Uh, the film Encounters at the End of the World is dedicated to Roger Ebert. And as whom I love as a, as, as a wonderful warrior, a soldier, good soldier of cinema. And I, I said to him, uh, Roger, uh, this dedication uh, will prevent you from reviewing the film. You cannot do this anymore. <laughs> So he decided to <laughs> send me a letter, which he did. And I kept, I kept it completely secret, but Roger eventually uh, published it on his website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a very beautiful letter, so I, I'm, I'm glad he did. And, and that's where I discovered it. Um, incidentally, I, I mentioned it briefly when we uh, met each other earlier tonight, but I really feel compelled to say it again. I saw your new film, Encounters at the End of the World, last night on the big screen uh, up at the Jacob Burns Film Center. And, and it's such a thrill to be seated here with you because you've made another, yet another brilliant masterpiece. Congratulations. It's so extraordinary. Um, amazing film. Amazing, of course, which is what we've basically come to expect from you at this stage of the game. Um, <laughs> Leaping forward, uh, uh, he says, Dear Werner, without ever making a movie for solely commercial reasons, without ever having a dependable source of financing, without the attention of the studios and the oligarchies that decide what may be filmed and shown, you have directed at least 55 films or television productions, and we will not count the operas. You have worked all the time because you have depended on your imagination instead of budgets, stars, or publicity campaigns. You have had the visions and made the films and trusted people to find them, and they have. It is safe to say you are as admired and venerated as any filmmaker alive, among those who have heard of you, of course. Those who do not know your work and the work of your comrades in the independent film world are missing experiences that might shake and inspire them. You often say this modern world is starving for images, that the media pound the same paltry ideas into our heads time and again, and that we need to see around the edges or over the top. When you open Encounters at the End of the World by following a marine biologist under the ice flows of the South Pole and listening to the alien sounds of the creatures who thrive there, you show me a place on my planet I did not know about, and I am richer. You are the most curious of men. You are like the storytellers of old, returning from far lands with spellbinding tales. In the process of compiling your life's work, you have never lost your sense of humor. Your narrations are central to the appeal of your documentaries, and your wonder at human nature is central to your fiction. In one scene, you can foresee the end of life on Earth, and in another, show us country musicians picking their guitars and banjos on the roof of a hut at the South Pole. You did not go to Antarctica, you assure us at the outset, to film cute penguins. But you did film one cute penguin, a penguin that was disoriented and was steadfastly walking in precisely the wrong direction into an ice vastness the size of Texas. Quote, and if you turn him around in the right direction, you say, he will turn himself around and keep going in the wrong direction until he starves and dies. The sight of that penguin waddling optimistically towards his doom would be heartbreaking, except that he is so sure he is correct. But I have started to wander off like the penguin, my friend. I have started out to praise your work and have ended by describing it. Maybe it is the same thing. You and your work are unique and invaluable, and you ennoble the cinema when so many debase it. You have the audacity to believe that if you make a film about anything that interests you, it will interest us as well. And you have proven it. With admiration, Roger. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah.
Well, I, I salute him, the good soldier of cinema. We have very few left. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because with, with fewer and fewer mm -hmm. uh, film critics, um, uh, obviously there's less and less interesting discussion of film, yeah. uh, a, a drastically abbreviated dis diversity of opinion. And um, it's, it's, it's too bad, uh, thinking back to a time when there were more interesting ideas, uh, perspectives yeah. around. Um, Roger Ebert has always been an extraordinary film critic. And just recently, with, with his health struggles, he's yeah. come to reveal himself as just as a great, extraordinary just human yeah. being, hasn't he? Well, he's soldiering on uh, despite his affliction. He has uh, battled cancer for more than two years. Um, and because of uh, some very major surgery around his neck, he cannot speak anymore. So he would communicate uh, by, by smiling at you and writing little notes on a pad. And uh, that's the way I, I, I communicate with him. And this is the reason why he, uh, of course, he couldn't write a, re a review of, uh, of the film. Uh, you don't do that when it's um, uh, dedicated to you. For me, it's very moving uh, having received this letter, and I never expected he would publish it. I would never have published it. Um, those things uh, should stay among two men, but he chose to, to have it published, uh, and I thank him for it, and he has been very kind to my films and to my work. Well, I think that it's, uh, it's safe to say that, that we, myself certainly not, I don't know how many people here would, uh, would not characterize a, a sense of your films in such a poetic way, but certainly yeah. I thought uh, it, it really sums up a, a, a great yeah. way of viewing your body of work. Um, the, um, in Aguirre, here's a question I've wanted yes. to ask you okay, yeah. ever since I saw the film every night uh, when it opened in Los Angeles where I was living at the time and saw it. The, um, the, uh, has most everybody seen Aguirre? Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so here is this amazing film, and it begins, and there's a trek through the jungle, and then the, the party arrives at the river. And now we see a sustained, fairly wide shot of the water. And maybe the music of Popol Vuh is on yeah. the soundtrack, creating this amazing marriage, which is so emblematic of all your work, of, of, of sound and image, music and image. And this shot keeps lasting, and it's wonderful. Yeah. And then, extraordinarily, I think the film cuts to a tighter shot of the water, yes, which does. then plays and plays and plays. Why did you do that? What led you to that moment? Um, I have a theory. It's, it's very hard to verbalize this, but uh, I was very fascinated by these raging waters of Urubamba River. It's just right down below Machu Picchu. And um, I filmed it, and I, I asked the cinematographer, hold the shot, hold the shot. This is so, so violent. This is so incredible. And, uh, and I knew I would use it in the film, which I did, out of any proportion. We are, you have the information of the river raging down there and boiling in rage. And yet, uh, uh, although we, we understand the image within two seconds, the shot is held more than a minute. For a while, I thought I would have opening credits over it. And then I decided, no, they must not be over this. I just hold it, and, and I prepare the, the audience for something out of proportion, for human beings that are completely crazed in, in their insane dreams of power. And it's, it's going to be something, a, a fever dream in the jungle, which is completely out of proportion. Many serious people who are working in the, in the industry tell me, ah, this is miscut and, and misedited. Uh, you hmm. should have made it much shorter. <laughs> and I said, no, I, I, I do it as it is, and, and it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I, first I was trying to, uh, and I, I love that explanation, and at, at first I was trying to understand why this, this moment